Yo, what's up everyone? <clears throat> I know, another video. Um, that's because I was just thinking about some stuff um, and just meditating on, again, everything that the Lord has been having me speak on and so many other brothers and sisters um, of our death with Christ and being alive in Him by His life as well as being free from the law. So, um... Romans 8, okay, I'm just going to read a bit of Romans 8. Uh, we'll probably go one through, one through something, one through, one through 8 or something like that. But anyways, here we go. Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ... For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. It's the law of sin and death is, is done with because the law of the spirit of the life in Christ is now what is active, what is taking hold, what is, what is here and now. It is made us free from the law of sin and death because there is a new law within us. It is the law of the spirit of life in Christ. Now the life of Christ within us has destroyed and made us free from the law of sin and death, seeing the positional truths that we are dead with Christ, crucified with him. And when we are dead, we are freed from the law, free from the power of sin and death. And then we are resurrected, will be in the likeness of his resurrection. Verse 3, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in his flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That is not saying, now go and be righteous and, and fulfill the law. No, the, the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us because Jesus Christ lives within us. Hallelujah. Because he fulfilled everything. He is the fulfillment of all things. And we are alive in him. And those people who want to say that they have to obey the law now, look what it says. What the law could not do, which was bring you righteousness, which was bring you life. For if life could come or if righteousness could have come by the law, then Christ died in vain. What the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Your flesh is always weak and will always be weak. And we don't look to our flesh and maintaining laws and ordinances and obeying the law to earn righteousness or life. Because through the law, neither righteousness or life has can be, can be found, can be earned. None of that. And our flesh is, our flesh is weak. We cannot do it. You cannot do it. All those people who say, no, but now I believe, so now I need to obey the law. Why? Why do you look at obeying the law if, you're, if initially Christ came because of the weakness of your flesh, of my flesh, and which righteousness could not come by the law, life could not come by the law, and now has the righteousness of God, which is by faith in, the Jesus, in Jesus Christ, has been manifested now, in these last times, righteousness without the deeds of the law, Romans chapter 3. Why are you not just resting in the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ? Why are you not just resting in the finished work of Jesus Christ? Why do you continue to look back at your flesh, which is weak, which cannot deal with sin because Christ has already dealt with it? Take yourself out of the equation and rest in Jesus Christ and what he did. Hallelujah. And a lot of people will say, oh, look, but now you have to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Now you've got to go do it. Look at yourself and your performance. Now you've got to strengthen yourself to go walk in the spirit. Go focus on walking in the spirit and go focus on doing that. And by, by walking in the spirit, you're probably going to obey the law or by obeying the law. Now you're walking in the spirit. No. Do you want to know how we know that we're walking in the spirit? Let's go to Romans chapter eight. Let's continue down in the chapter. Romans chapter 8, verse 9, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. So stop going to what is dead to try and deal with sin, to try and perfect yourself, to try and earn righteousness or earn life. You cannot do that 
with something that is dead, that has been condemned, that has been crucified, that has been dealt with and done with, and it's been put away. Put away the old man and come to Christ by faith, believing in his death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Hallelujah. Now, to go a little bit further into that, again, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Just amen, hallelujah. Let's, let's believe that, hallelujah. And let's see that that is true. That is true right here, right now, hallelujah, because it's the word of God. It is truth. The law of the spirit of life in Christ, the life of Christ in us, which has made our spirit alive, joined our spirit with him, hallelujah, has made us free from the law of sin and death because we have been baptized into his death, cutting off the old man, cutting off the dominion that sin and death and the law had over us, freeing us from fear and bondage when we were under the law and sin and death, cut that off by his death and his burial and his resurrection. And now we have been joined to the spirit of Christ Christ's spirit has been joined to us and now we are freely enjoying and experiencing his life within us. Hallelujah. So don't go back to what was weak and already judged and already dealt with, which is your flesh. Stop trying to earn righteousness outside of Christ because we know in Romans chapter three that the righteousness of God is by faith and that the righteousness of God is now manifest without the law, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, let me just go back because that was a terrible paraphrase and we're gonna read it. I know I just did a video on this, but verse 21 of chapter three of Romans. <laughs> but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to stop there. Go back to chapter eight now. So good. So good, guys. Pharisees, legalists, stop. 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 <laughs> stop. <laughs> guys, stop. You're just digging yourself into a hole. You are just continually trapping yourself in fear and bondage, in death. You're continually trapping yourself in there. Rather than just coming, you're being disobedient and you are in unbelief when you continue to go and try to earn righteousness and be, be alive by the law. It is not going to happen. It's not that you have to do it better and then it'll happen. No, it's quite literally, poof, the option is not there. The option is not there. You cannot do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And by being, by being in your flesh, by the way, which is this, which is being disobedient in your unbelief, by trying to obey the law to earn righteousness, you are in your flesh. Because if you have trusted in your ability to earn righteousness by the law, and you have not trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection, it says that you are in the flesh and you are not walking in the spirit because to you are, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell within you. So if you have not believed and trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, the spirit of God, Pharisees, legalists, the spirit of God does not live in you. Therefore, you are walking in the flesh as well as us born again believers who have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. We do fall short some, we do fall short and fall short of the glory of God. We do sin. We do get caught up in our flesh sometimes, but we are still in the spirit. Our life is still in the spirit. Our spirit is still alive because of what Jesus Christ did. And now rather than stay in our flesh and the carnal mind, which is enmity against God, rather than stay there and say, okay, I've got to keep doing my part. I've got to keep doing my part, which is in unbelief and being disobedient because of our unbelief. That's what it is. I'm not saying that you're being disobedient by not obeying the law. I'm saying that we need to, in faith, just come to Christ. So we need to, when we fall and we sin and we make mistakes and sometimes we respond in our flesh or something like that, we snap, we get angry. We might've told a white lie, whatever it is that has pulled us back into the flesh and into the old creation. Rather than stay there and deal with it, 
which is staying back in the flesh, which is staying back in unbelief, we come boldly to the throne of grace in faith, believing these positional truths. And when we come by faith and we go and we enter rest, hallelujah, believing in what Jesus Christ did for us, we know that we are in the spirit because the spirit of God dwells within us. I pray you understand what I'm saying. I feel like I'm not able to articulate it as well as I want to. In the heat of the moment and when I get super jazzed up, I am not the best speaker. I talk pretty, all right? I don't, <laughs> I'm not able to paint the picture completely that I want to paint, I feel like. But I know the Lord's going to use this. Hallelujah. It's awesome. So, those who want to obey the law, those who want to stay in their unbelief, those are the ones being disobedient. Those are the ones that are in the flesh and not in the spirit. Those are the ones who are carnally minded and they will only experience death and condemnation and fear because they're trying to live in the realm that has been judged. By the death of resurrection, by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the old creation is done. And we, oh, hallelujah, have been given eternal life by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are alive by the blood of Jesus Christ. We get to come into an enjoyment of life, of the life of Christ. We get to enjoy the presence of God. We get to enjoy the peace, excuse me, the kindness, the the mercies, the grace, the comforts of God, we get to enjoy those by faith. We don't enjoy those by being in, in the realm of the carnal mind and the flesh of unbelief back into obeying the law. That only points us to the fact that we can't do it. And it only points us to fear and condemnation. And it is there to point us to Christ. So we come to, an, we come to such an end of ourselves. We get so defeated or so tired, or so just whatever, we fall so many times that I pray the Lord eventually, which, because this, this is how it works, the Lord will bring us to an end of ourselves so that we see that it's just by faith. Stop looking at what you think you need to do, my child. Just come and enjoy what I've done for you. Hallelujah. So I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put that, that, that to rest there. And I'm going to end with uh, verse 10 and 11 of Romans chapter 8, okay? And if Christ be in you, which we know that we are in the Spirit, okay, we'll start with verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now reckon this positional truth and lay hold of it. Lay hold of Christ and what he has brought you into. Don't try and work yourself into the spirit by obeying the law, which is be going back into your flesh. You're, you'll stay there. You will never go into the spirit, into the good land by obeying the law and trying to work. That's going back to the flesh. That's going back to performance. That's going back to looking at yourself, okay? But we know that we are in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. So reckon that true and hallelujah, lay hold of it and believe and enter. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if the, if the Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, which we know it dwells in us by our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. A shadow, a shadow, or a, a picture of it, not a shadow, a picture of the resurrection, hallelujah. Our life in Christ now. We are alive in Christ. Okay, and then I was thinking about something else really quick. This is the last thing. I know this video is getting a little long again. Philippians 1.21. I was just thinking about how we need to reckon ourselves dead and experience the life of Christ within us, which we do by faith, by believing. We don't experience Christ as life by obeying the law, which we are dead to. We'll only experience death. Um, verse 21 of Philippians chapter one. For to me, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And a lot of people, including myself, have taken this verse 
and said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. I'm alive, therefore I have Christ, and to die is gain. A physical death means that I am present with the Lord and that is much better. Well, I do think that there is, that's, that's part of what he is talking about, or that he, that is what he's talking about. The Lord sort of, I looked at this verse in a different way. Rather than a physical death, I, I saw this with the eyes of positional truth. And I want to share this with you. Just to, I'm not saying this is what it is, guys. I'm just, all of what I'm telling you is just take this, go to the word, read it, and see what the Lord shows you. And these are just things to chew on and meditate and to think about, okay? For to me, to live is Christ. We are only alive because of Jesus Christ, right? So while we live, it is Christ that is living. If you want to experience Christ, it's right now because you're alive. You have Christ in you, giving you his life. And we believe that and we get to experience the life of Christ. As we live, we are alive because of Christ, okay? And to die is gain. Now again, physical death means we would be with the Lord and that is far better, yes. But now take this as a positional truth, okay? To reckon yourself dead, to reckon the old man dead and done away with, you are free from the law, free from the power of sin and death, you're free from the law of sin and death, to reckon yourself dead, to die is gain, to reckon yourself dead, which is to die, to the old man, is gain. Why? Because by faith you are believing that Jesus Christ is now your life. You are believing in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you are having faith in the blood, believing what he has said about your old man, that it's done and you no longer have any history with Adam, but now your new life, your new creation, your newness is with Christ. I pray that you, you, you can hear what I'm saying. That positional truth, to die is gain. We gain the knowledge of Christ by understanding by faith our death, our being baptized into the death of Christ and now alive unto God. To live is Christ, Christ's life. To die is gain. To by faith understand our death is also to experience more life in Christ. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that to rest right there because... I don't want to try and over explain it, okay? Um, because it's, it's just one verse that's like 12 words. <laughs> so take that to live as Christ, to die as gain with the eyes of positional truths and see what happens. See what happens. Um, if you don't feel led to do that, don't do it. But that's what the Lord just boop, gave me a little snip of that. And I was like, I want to share that. I wonder what people think about it, okay? So that's it. I pray that this video blessed you again, guys. <laughs> Pharisees, Pharisees, get away from yourself and go to Jesus. Done. Get away from yourself and go to Jesus. Hallelujah. Always go to Jesus. If you want to grow spiritually and be a mature Christian and grown up, go to Jesus more. <laughs> you do not grow up by going to Jesus and then saying, cool, I've got it now. I'm going to go obey the law better and I'm going to do good things. No, you grow spiritually by growing in the knowledge of Christ. That's it. Hallelujah. Okay? Let's all do that. Praise the Lord. I pray that the Lord gives us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of who he is, that he draws us further into the knowledge of Christ and further into his rest. Hallelujah. Into the new creation, the seventh and the eighth day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, please forgive me. My eye is itchy. Please forgive me if I talk too fast. I'll try and work on that. <laughs> Forgive me if I talk too fast. Forgive me if this was hard to follow. Um, but yeah, maybe listen to it a couple of times and uh, or take it to take it to the Lord and take it to the Word, you know, and see what happens. Uh, so forgive me if this was confusing. Um, I had a lot to say and I did it really fast. My bad. <laughs> All right, God bless y'all. Take care.